executive producer, Lillian Garcia. Every athlete is on this quest. Every performer dives in head first, battling real life challenges and overcoming obstacles in an effort to make their dreams reality. reality. Singer, speaker, and 15 year WWE host Lillian Garcia was the first woman to ever announce WrestleMania and is now the PFL MMA cage announcer. Oh, yeah. And now she's giving you an all access pass to the human interest stories of elite athletes, extraordinary entertainers, and wellness experts. Now let's embark on another fascinating journey of chasing glory with your host, Lillian Garcia. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Chasing Glory. So excited because this episode is coming to you all the way from Chicago, Wizard World, where I was signing, and I got to sign with the former WWE's champion, Victoria. Hey! <laughs> and also the WWE <laughs> Hall of Famer, Tori Wilson. Hey! <laughs> And I can tell that Tori's like just waiting for me to like do something goofy. You're just <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> That's what I always love hanging out with you guys because I know it's going to be a good time. <laughs> we're, goof- we're goofballs. Yes. We've been sitting here signing and, um, you know, just getting everything going. It is Friday and it's supposed to get more and more packed as the day progresses. What's your favorite part about signing? At com- I love comic cons. Um, yeah. You guys know I'm a, like a nerd and geek at heart. So cosplayers. Cosplayers, yeah. But yeah. this one, John yeah. Travolta's here tomorrow. Yes, so. I hear. I'm so Swoon. excited. Oh I actually got to meet Henry Winkler today. That He's was awesome. awesome. Oh my God. He's awesome. <laughs> and Ralph the Mouth was here too. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. just walking around. Yeah, so it's just cool. You get to see a bunch of people. And then we also get to see you guys, the WWE Universe, and everybody that's supported us throughout the year. So thank you so much. And now, for this episode, I'm so excited because Nikki Cross is my guest today. Now, you've been on Chasing Glory, Tori, which I, I'm so excited that you are on. Uh-huh. And Victoria is going to be in a future episode. Yay! Yay! I'm Can't excited. Can't wait to get your Chasing Glory I'm story. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm apologize right now. No, no. Oh, why? It's going to oh, no, be great. Because, you know, I chit-chat so much. It's going to be great. You're going to have to be awesome. like three episodes. Yeah. <laughs> part one, part two, part three. <laughs> Well, Nikki Cross is right now one half of the women's champion as far as a tag team. And um, it's just so ex- incredible to see what she's doing along with Alexa Bliss. And in the women's division, you guys paved the way. I always say that. You paved the way. You did these amazing... Now, you were in a steel cage match. <laughs> yeah. The first ever steel cage match. Yes. And Toria yes. was in a ton of bikini matches. I mean, <laughs> yes. I took, you the, I took her butt to the, my I'm, face yeah, plenty of I times. Mean, yeah. <laughs> The girls need to appreciate. They just really need to appreciate that I got the bikini out of the way. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm, everyone was so sick of bikinis by the time I left that place. And bra and penny matches. That, that, that's why they get these killer matches now. Yeah, yeah they, I love it. And also, too, like, imagine, like, having to stand by Tori in a b- bikini. It's like, so you're like, oh, oh no. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do a lingerie and match. Then, wait, and then you, wait, and then I'm going to wrestle in that? Yes. <laughs> But <laughs> honestly, right? Honestly, we hated them. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, but we were already well, naked wrestling already. Let me tell you something that was so funny though. I'll never forget one particular Halloween. Everyone has got those Halloween costumes and getting all sexy. And who comes out in this sumo outfit, Victoria? I, I was trying to use my brains about like um. That they can't lift me and eliminate me, so I was like, "Going, oh, I'm totally gonna win this." And then there was one moment, if you go back on, yeah. on the network, um, that Tori is in her football outfit, and then we always laugh. Candace and I always laugh that like, when she gets her, her mean face, it makes you laugh. Yeah. Oh my That's god! Because so so, so you're rude. so cute and Wait, sweet. I'm supposed to be a badass. That is so rude. <laughs> We were like, oh my God, look at her. She's trying to look tough. She's so sweet and angelic, you know? Oh my God. Well, I got to say though, in that particular match, you literally had, you didn't see me because you were in the match, but I was crying on the side. I couldn't stop 
crying and crying because I was laughing so hard. Because you would go down and then you could get, get up. I could get up. <laughs> There's those little feet. I think Tori and Mickey James was turning me around, yeah. right, in a circle. And I was like, no, seriously, guys, we have two minutes left. We have, I hello, can't get up. Get me up. Get me up. <laughs> I know. Oh I know. And then I... I, at the end of the career, I was trying to pop everybody, like because we were having such serious matches. My goal was to make everybody laugh and Fit Finley laugh. Yeah, you know? and so. you did. You accomplished. Yeah. So, yeah. oh my god! So thank you guys for paving the way. I'm sure Nikki Cross appreciates that, and all the other women. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's I'm about sure, time. I'm sure, I'm at the top of her list. Yeah. <laughs> You are. Stop it. It's, it's Hall awesome. of Famer. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. But it is awesome. Nikki Cross, I was a fan of hers when, in the indie shows, but and it's about time they had tag team champions, yeah. right? Yes. No, it's uh, really awesome yeah, it's so it. awesome. She's really good. She's it's really good, too. All right, so without further ado, here is Nikki Cross's journey of chasing glory. Born in Glasgow, Scotland, Nikki Cross knew a life and career in sports entertainment was in her future. Falling in love with pro wrestling at the age of 10, she knew she had to scratch her itch, which became her obsession. While studying at the University of Glasgow and finding time between working at a restaurant, she would train at the Scottish Wrestling Alliance, and although she was a little over five feet tall, she never let her size get in the way of her dreams. Taking advantage of the rising British wrestling scene, she would become one of the top female wrestlers, all while being a fully qualified personal trainer and fitness instructor. Nikki would build a reputation of being one of the most technically sound performers to ever come out of Scotland, which led her all over the world from Europe to Japan to the United States of America. She even competed in TNA's British Boot Camp too, as she continued her journey of making it as a top wrestler. In the fall of 2015, Nikki received a WWE tryout while they were on tour in Europe, and within months, she was announced as one of the 10 signees that would report to NXT and train at the WWE Performance Center. She would begin wrestling for NXT, making her the first ever Scottish woman to compete in the WWE. Nikki would become a household name when she was a member of Sanity, where she would showcase her reckless yet fun personality. She would be a mainstay in the highly praised NXT women's division before achieving her lifelong dream. Nikki Cross would be announced as one of the six NXT wrestlers to be called over to the main roster. She would participate in her first ever Royal Rumble match, but would eventually get lost amongst the crowded roster until her partnership with Alexa Bliss that would give her a much deserved break. She would compete in the Money in the Bank match representing Bliss and after some single success, she would win her first championship in the WWE, where alongside Alexa Bliss, they would become the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Outside of the ring, she most recently married her longtime sweetheart, WWE superstar and fellow Sanity member, Killian Dane. Don't let her small stature fool you. Nikki Cross's unpredictable nature has fans worldwide loving the chaos she brings inside the squared circle. It's about to get real, raw, and inspiring with Nikki Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Nikki. You're here. I'm so excited. Um, Welcome to Chasing Glory. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to hear your journey and what a way to start it. January, you got married, mm. Killian and Dane. Yeah. You guys worked together at mm. NXT. That's how you met? No, so we actually met in Scotland. He, so he is from Ireland and he moved to Scotland to pursue wrestling training. And there wasn't, at that time, there wasn't really any schools in his area. So he moved to Edinburgh and he traveled through to oh, the okay. wrestling school in Glasgow. So he'd been training for about four years and then in 2008 I travelled to that school and then we were, you know, we trained together, we were training buddies, we travelled together, we were really good friends and it kind of just oh, developed into... I love that. <laughs> um, I remember, uh, I always remember this, this is like, this might be why we ended up together. We were in the back seat of a friend's car not like that, but my yeah, friend yeah. was driving. My friend was uh, <laughs> Let's um, make that clear. Let's make that clear. We were driving to a show, or we were driving back from a show, and he had like a galaxy muffin. I, I don't know if you guys have them here, but it's like a, no. a chocolate chip 
muffin. Oh, and oh he, okay. And he gave me some of it. He shared his muffin with me. <laughs> so for me, I don't know if that was like love at first, like love at first bite, <laughs> bite. of the chocolate muffin. <laughs> so that may be it. <laughs> that is adorable. That's so cute. So, so you guys have known each other for a while then. So uh, when did it years. spark? Uh, when did it spark? We were at the cinema watching The Dark Knight. Um, it was my friend's birthday. It was actually the same friend that was we were in the car with. It's our friend Scotty. Yeah. Um, we would actually, we were, he was a, in a tag team with Scotty and I valeted them. Like when I first broke in, I was valeting him, their team. Yeah. And we would, all, the three of us would always travel together and always ride together. And funnily enough, it was Scotty's birthday where we went to the cinema. A big group of us went to see Dark Knight and we were sitting beside each other and just, just the sp- like that night, the yeah. sparks were really like. I mean, when I first like when I first met, I was like, oh, he's like, he's very cute, <laughs> like he's very handsome, and so. But th- that was the night where just like that's probably the the any time we'd spent time with each other before it was at a show or at training or traveling. This yeah. was like in a An social date. setting, yeah, you know, and there was like ten other people there, so um, yeah. so it was it's just the sparks kind of grew from there, and then we were kind of like. Hold like I don't know. Did we you just, hold hands? We I think like we like he had his hand out and I was like oh maybe oh no no and then we we're second guess and I second guessed that and I was like no then we we held hands later on oh. um, and then we uh, went to uh, we were at a nightclub and we were dancing and I believe that was our first kiss. <laughs> oh God, that's great. So I want I don't I wish I could remember the song but it was like a really it was like a very. Uh, really relaxed very chilled out um like bar nightclub yeah they're just super relaxed and i, I always say blink one eight two we're playing in fact blink one eight two are my favorite band so yeah. we're going to pretend blink one eight two we're playing oh i like it <laughs> and uh yeah that was our first cast and then we our first official date was i made him go and see mamma mia <gasps> oh my god okay <laughs> a guy who's gonna see that you know he's it been was for sad. life and, did um, you like it he loved it. He did. He oh, loved good. that. And then my we, husband did too. Oh, it's just, it's a fun movie. I've not seen the second one yet because oh, the second one is tremendous. It is so good. Okay, it is so good. Is Mary Streep in that? Uh, she is very briefly, oh, very briefly. That's what put me off. I you don't like Meryl. her? No, I know. I love Meryl Streep. I heard oh. she doesn't have a big as a no, bigger role. But there is a reason why. But oh, wow. trust me when I say it's really good. It's we'll really try good. It. We'll, we had our we had it our, was fun. We had our ten year anniversary last year, and Mamma Mia Two was out in the cinema, and I was like, yeah. that'd be so nice. Like yeah. ten years, we're going to see the the right, and I think we went to go and see like maybe the Avengers or something instead. Uh, yeah. We, we okay. went and saw something else, but. I will. You have to. I'll watch it and I'll give you. I'll, yes. Yeah. I have just to. love Meryl Streep so much. I do too. I do too. And I thought the same thing. I was like, especially sequels are usually not as good. Mm. This one was really well done. It's a lot of fun, and she does show up, and so you're okay. really happy to see her. Uh, yeah. So you'll see. Oh, <laughs> love, love me some Meryl. Ah, love me some Meryl. I love it. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Thank and you. What, like I said. What a way to like start your year because that's been the theme now. Like all of these things that you've been accomplishing, accomplishing, and your dreams are coming to fruition. And it's not here. You have a husband, and now you have a <laughs> career. And so um, now I know though that you were actually called over to RAW. When was that? Was well, before 2019? Right? It was 2018. The end. The so the end of 2018. It was. It was like Monday, it was a Monday afternoon and I was in, it's funny, so I was in Scotland. So when oh. I got the news about getting called up, they, like, so I was actually in Scotland. So I saw that I had like these, I had these like missed calls and like yeah. voicemails. I was like, oh my goodness, what if I, <laughs> I was in trouble? Right. And I called, um, it was Matt Bloom that, yeah. that told me the news and he was like, so you're going to see a graphic on Raw tonight, and you're you're getting called up, and I, and oh, I was just like, "Oh my god!" And I thought he, I didn't know if he was rubbing me or joking. Yeah. I was like, "What?" And I was like, and then it was so funny. And then it was funny because I was just trying to get like my mum was in that we would spent the day together in Scotland, and I was getting her in a taxi. I had like Matt Bloom on the phone, and I was just trying to process everything. But I was trying to make sure she got in her taxi <laughs> and got in the correct taxi or oh, Uber right. it was. Uh, it was like, it was just, and so I got that news and that was the very, very end of December. So we came back and I had one more, we had NXT Full Sail 
and I want to say that was like the 4th of January, I'd have to go and check it, but um, I had one more, so I did the taping for there and I got to say like, goodbye, which was, yeah. we will probably go into that later, but like, that was so important to me, getting to like, because the full sale crowd were like, without, they, I don't know, they watched me grow Bloom. and yeah, watched girl. me for two years and they, they just made me feel so loved and so, they just made yeah. me feel like, me. Yeah. So it was just it was getting to say goodbye, and then I got to work with Bianca Belair again, and yeah. love love working with her. So she's I, awesome. Yeah, and I did that, you know. So did that tape, and and that was that. That was last of NXT. So then so when was, what date was that? Do you I remember? It was like the fourth of January of this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. they had us do. Then we were going between you know Raw and SmackDown, and then they did the brand split. And then when they did the brand split, mm -hmm. they um ended up ended up on Raw. And it, but it was funny because we've we've done smack like we've um, we had the storyline with um, Bailey, so we end up being on SmackDown too. So it's just been a it's been yeah. such a wild year. Yeah, tell me how has it <laughs> felt? Like, is it what you thought it was going to be? Like when you were you know waiting and waiting and waiting to be mm. called up. I don't really like to be to say called up because to me it's just called over to another brand because NXT has become such a 100%. huge brand that it's not even to me like down below Raw or SmackDown at yeah. all. It's just literally I three agree. brands. It's like, it yeah. is. There's three different brands. So you've been just agree. called over to Raw. Um, is has it been? Because now you've been here, you know, f for over half a year. Has it felt the way you thought it was going to feel? Yeah, because I, okay, I don't know why I say yeah when I should be saying I. Um, I. Um, for me, so I was actually last year in the summertime, they brought me on the road a few times, like just to like, um, you know, fill in for someone if they were sick or, you know, yeah. if they needed, you know, like a weekend off. So I actually got some, and that, that experience was crucial. That was like July, and then there was a couple of times, like I want to say at least like half a dozen times last year where they like brought me on the road to like, you know, I would leave Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So I got that experience of like, you know, getting your rental car, um, yeah. deciding which hotel do you want to stay, the, do you want to like, do you want to stay the night? Do you want to drive through the night? Do you want to go halfway? Do you want to do two hours there, two hours there? Like, you know, all these things you don't, you think about, don't think right. about. Right. So those experiences and even just, like I said, like picking a hotel that, you know, it's kind of easy access to a gym or easy access to Whole Foods if you can get one, you know? Right. So it's just it, that, I think those experiences really helped me for the travel side of it. And like picking up, like I said, picking up the rental and keeping in mind that like sometimes you have to like go, or you have to get on like the shell bus and then when you return the car, you have to leave enough time so you're not rushing for your flight. And right, you know, it's a right, lot of right. like things that like, it's important. Like if you don't know this stuff, then you'll miss your flight. Yeah. Like, miss your flight home. So you really grow up fast here. <laughs> you grow up fast. Um, and But in terms mm. of, um, I think NXT was, I think it, it prepared, it prepared us well, uh, prepared us. The, I mean, I would say the the live every Monday and every Tuesday you're going live, right? And it's getting and it's it's embracing that and really just loving that, you know that that thrill, yeah. Um, and you know working with the writers and being like with the, creatively, just always like pitching ideas and having like I always see like ideas as like babies and you just want to like nurture it and grow it and then you show off and like yeah, you yeah. just you want to grow your ideas and develop your ideas so I did that in NXT and then that's something similar we've been doing up here so I, I know I shouldn't like I mean across um that's no, it's funny it's, it. it's just a it's so it's such a habit yeah and that's it. something we do with Raw and Smackdown so for me th it is what I imagined like the the travels never bothered me like I always knew that when you sign up for this, when you re when you realize that this is what I would do with my life. Yeah. Traveling's part of that. Yeah. And you and I learned to love it. Like I always have my Kindle. Like I love reading. Um, I actually went back to school when I'm going back to school for my masters. Um, now in September. Yeah. Next oh wow, month. that's amazing. So masters uh, in history. So in history. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you graduated from the University of Glasgow. Yes. Studying history, right? Yes. 
So that was Amazing. the bachelor. So this would be the master's. Yeah. So that's just like the next kind of step. Yeah. And I did, uh, I studied women's history because I went to a college in Florida just to kind of see if, because the master's is such a huge undertaking. It's a yeah. massive commitment mentally. Why? Why do you feel the need for that? Like what's driving you to get your master's? For me, I think it's important to prepare yourself because you're not always going to be able to wrestle. Um, you, we are all like one day away from, yeah. God forbid, like that, that injury. You know, right. God forbid, like I don't know if there's any wood to touch. Um, I think you can knock on yourself. Uh, I'll knock on my head. <laughs> but you know, you're, you're, and that that was always something that scared me. Like yeah. I didn't want. I always wanted to be, and I feel that like wrestling is. It's like my passion. Like I've never, like I've never loved anything like, like wrestling. Like yeah. you know, it's, it's, I've watched it since I was ten years old. Yeah. So I never wanted to do like, wrestling as my passion, but I always knew that like there is a possibility that I'm not physically going to be able to do that. Yeah. Um. You know, when I'm fifty or sixty. Right. No, it is going to get to a point where you can't, and that's what I think is so important is to prepare. I think it's yeah. really, really smart of you. And so history, what would you want to do with that? For me, a, a teaching. Yeah. I like interacting. I like interacting with people, and I like. I just. I like. I always say this. I like learning about the past because I think it should, hopefully, stop us from making like <laughs> the same mistakes. mistakes you would think. <laughs> but it was. It was funny. I did women's history this last twelve months, um, and it was. That was like the closest thing besides wrestling that. I would come home and talk for hours about, really? and my husband, uh, Damien, like Demo, Damien, yeah. Killian, uh, Demo, he that that, and I would speak to him for hours because there was so much stuff that I was learning, and I was like, I felt like, and then I was, it was, I was thinking about mad different perspectives and so many just different things I didn't realize, and you admire and respect, and it was like the closest thing. Like it's, I mean, wrestling's still like number one, but like yeah. that's the closest thing I've ever like that passionate about that's great so I just was like I need to do something with this because I mean I could even there's so much I can do with this I, even if I don't want to do teaching there's like there's different there's so much you can do yeah um but I think teaching is kind of I don't know teaching I always gravitate towards like if I couldn't wrestle anymore yeah well, it's almost like a performance too right mm -hmm. teachers to me I feel like because I remember I've never been a teacher but I do remember as a kid that I would get in the chalkboard and I would pretend to have a class yes. and then I'd start to teach and it felt like a performance. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, I, I did that like with my Barbies. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So yeah. it's a natural progression mm -hmm. for sure. It's like it still fulfills the part of performing that mm -hmm. you have because you obviously have that in you. And then yet it also incorporates what you're saying, your passion of just teaching something so incredible that you've learned and you just want to share with others. Yeah, and I love that word fulfillment because I remember having this English teacher and she made such like, such an impact on my life. Like that mm. I would never, like she, she just gave me confidence. Like she helped me and she just made such a difference to my life. And she was just such a warm, like just this warm lady. And it was, it was so, funny because like so uh, I have two older sisters so my middle sister she was at two years above me at school so I would I think the the teacher expected me to be more like my my older sister who you know very like studious great student um on the quieter side and I came to her like this like Bah! Like I was yeah. just so like I think you. Like, I mean, this is your character. You like yeah, I just, you. Yeah. And I was so chatty, and I wouldn't like stop talking. And I think at first she was like, "You are like naughty." <laughs> like, yeah. And I think she just realised that I wasn't naughty. I was just like I don't know, a little boisterous maybe. Um, and I think she just realised that like, okay, like she's she has a good student. She's just different. Like she's yeah. just she's just lots of energy. <laughs> Right. So that was, and I just remember the impact she made. And teachers have that power. Yes, they um, do. Wrestling coaches, uh, Robbie Brookside. Yeah. He is. He is our um, he uh, NXT coach. Right. But we actually met Robbie. Uh, goodness gracious, seven, maybe not as much, six, 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 seven years ago, and he he changed so much, mm. and for the better. He like me and Damien, like yeah. um, me and Damien would both say that he, 
just showed us like proper ways to like I don't know just he changed a lot of our outlook um in the way he treats people yeah with such patience and yeah. such like he's so patient and he's so given he's so warm and it's like he makes such a difference to people yeah he changed like he changed our lives like he and and what is so funny whenever like I say that to him he's like oh he's I know, like he's so humble he's so humble and yeah. so I feel like I can actually say it and he can't stop me that's he's right not here. I love that <laughs> um so for me like he Robbie changed our lives and what William Regal is another person oh, never. who again he's so humble but yeah. he's not here so I can say it and yeah. that's someone else so like just the way they the way they've taught us has just been incredible and like I said it's changed our lives it's changed who we are as people and I think because of that teachers have such a vital role and I'm lucky enough that I've came across teachers that like it's been a blessing to have them and you know yeah. I don't know I, I've I just guess. that's why I've always gravitated towards that's that. great oh, that's so great you're so lucky because there are some other teachers that can have such a bad influence on people so bad. so I don't remember I was in primary one uh great uh, elementary? Elementary? Yeah, I mean, like uh, first. But first grade? Yeah. First, yeah, first grade. I was going to say grade one, there was not, it's not grade one. It's just first and grade. Yeah, I, I drew like outside the line, it was like a snake. Oh, and yeah. I drew outside the lines. Yeah. And she was so mad. And I never forgot that. Like, I still remember, like, she was furious at me. And I was four years old. Oh, so wow. I just, I still remember that. Like, do and you had, mind? Like, do you know if that's ever impacted you to feel like you can't go outside the lines? Uh, it's always more fun to go outside the lines. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think it just showed me that, like, the power that teachers have. Yeah. Because that was something, I was forever terrified of that teacher. Even when I went all the way up to primary seven and I was, like, 11 years old, I was still petrified of that teacher. Mm. And I think it just showed me how powerful, like, someone's reaction can be. Yeah. And the danger in that, like... Right, that's Not everything. danger, but... The long-term effects of that, right? Um, and yeah, like it was funny though, because when I was in primary one and primary two, I would, I was, I was kind of naughty. Like I would like draw all over my school books on purpose. On purpose. I love it. So see, you retaliated. Like she I retaliated. I rebelled. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I remember? I have this memory of like my mom and dad were like really annoyed because they were like, "Why are you writing in the books? You're going to get into trouble for that." And I knew that I was going to get into trouble, but I was like. I would do it anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just really. I can see that that's <laughs> what that teacher affected you when Me? she got so upset with you with drawing that you're like, really? Because I'm going to show you. all over the school books. I'll just do this, and I'm going to do that. Then watch this, and I'll <laughs> take it to another level. And then even now, so like, I've got the women's. We it was like a woman in America. I can't remember the authors. That was our textbook for our um, history course last year. Yeah. And you can see it even when I go back. I'm not like doodling like I yeah. would have in primary one, that there's highlights everywhere and there's underlines and, when someone, and there's big circles when I went like, so I'm still like putting, like yeah. I'm still doing that like um, 26 years later. <laughs> so. Trying outside the lines, I like it, <laughs> all right. Anything that helps me remember something. Yeah. So let me get to know you a little bit better from mm. that. I mean, you said you were in school and all, but how was life for you in Glasgow? Tell me about your life there Glasgow. growing up with your, you said two older sisters? Mm -hmm. Do you have a brother? No, Just no. The two? Okay. I got plenty of brothers when I joined wrestling. Whoa. Yes, true. I end up with plenty of brothers, uh, which is really nice. Um, Glasgow, Glasgow, Glasgow. So um, the first like 11 years, we grew up in a really, really bad area. Oh, really? And it was bad in the sense that the my dad's car kept getting like the one win, the windows tanned so like his car would keep getting wrecked oh, so wow. he would get it fixed because it was there was uh, like a lot of gangs oh, okay. um with like a lot of um just violence yeah and he would fix the car and then they would do it again and, and what did they happened. do they just spray they would, they, no they would like smash the windows in oh wow and they did that and they did that it wasn't anything personal against my family <laughs> it wasn't anything personal against our family it was they just did it because they were bored and they did it to a lot of the cars and so we we that's we we like it was too dangerous and they my mom and dad just wanted to keep us very uh, they kept us safe you know safe, so yeah. we ended up like I just read a lot like as a kid child person Wayne mm -hmm. I just was that your way to escape what was going on? I just read, like I was, yeah. like we went to the library, my, and we would take it like six books at a time, 
and it just made me like I would like Baby Sour Club and Sweet Valley Twins, Sweet Valley High. Um, so I read those books and then wrestling. You know, I discovered wrestling when I was about when I was ten. Um, How? My sister. So my sister discovered it. So my sister and me shared a room, and it was like so. It was one in the morning over there because of the time difference. Yeah. So pay per view would start like one in the morning, and it was at that point it was on Channel Four. And how old was she? At this she's two years older, so okay, she's, 10, 12, she's 13. Okay. That's so bad, I always forget. And you had, a, you had a TV in your room? We had a, room? Yeah, we had a TV, like, um, I think we had a video, VCR. Oh, okay. Back in those days, VCRs. Yeah, yeah. VCRs, yeah. And uh, so she wanted to put it on. I was like, pardon me. I was like, no, I was like, I, I'm tired, I want to go to bed. And she was like, no, no, it's really cool. Like, I promise, this is wrestling, it's really awesome. And I was just like, I, I was like, and then she put it on anyway, because she was the older sister. So she, yeah. you know, her way you had commands. anyone out there who has sisters understands. Yeah. And so she got her way. And so that it was fully loaded, 2000. And the first match, the opening match was Trish Stratus, uh, Tess and Albert oh versus Leah and the Hardy Boys. And it was a intergender uh, mixed tag match. Yeah. And that was it. That was up. <laughs> I was, Lita came out and she had like, oh, she was like the coolest, like she was just the coolest. And yeah. and then like Trish came out and it was like the soap opera and it, it, I was hooked like that. And then I watched the entire show and I, like, I kept asking like my sister all these questions. I was like, that's the, 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 and like, I like, and I was hooked. From then it was just, that was it. Wow. So we watched wrestling a lot. And then another thing we did was we would go to the video store. And this is something I, I was actually talking about this with someone the other day. I miss this. I'd been able to go into a video store and like renting out movies. Yeah. So I would ha I would get, this actually is a really funny story. I would lead, so I would I would pick one movie. My sister would get to pick the other. Because my other sister is like, there's an the, oh, she was much older. Like there was an age gap. Yeah. So she was older. So she was doing her own thing. So she would... Uh, I would pick one, my sister would pick one, and then we would like try and agree on one because it was three for two with global video. Ooh. <laughs> like three for two, like <laughs> let's get it on. And try to persuade my mum and dad to buy the popcorn, and they're like, no, it's a waste of money because it was like expensive. Like, right, right. Really, um, so I remember we had rented out the Sixth Sense. Oh, I can't tell the story in case someone's not seen the Sixth Sense. Uh, we'll just say spoiler alert. Okay, okay. mute this for the next minute, right? No, no, no. You have to do it. You okay. can do it. You can do it. We're just saying spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the Sixth Sense, then right now, <laughs> yes. stop it. <laughs> don't, don't, Go don't. See the Sixth Sense and then turn it back on. You okay. probably know where the story go is going. I uh, don't, but I've seen the movie. <laughs> but go ahead. So I watched the whatever other movie was. I watched it downstairs, and my sister watched it upstairs. Okay. So when we swapped, we we we, we exchanged on the stairs. <laughs> Wow. And then she was like, she handed me the video of the Sixth Sense, and she was like, "Oh, by the way, Bruce Willis is dead." <gasps> and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> what? what? Like, you spoiled the Sixth Sense." Why would she do that? I mean, we we were, we, you know, we were sisters, rebelling two years <laughs> apart. You know, I mean, it's going to happen. And I was like, "You spoiled the Sixth Sense," right? And that is like, I never forget that. Whenever I think of VCRs, <laughs> and videos, and global videos. And that was just something we did. And it was did just, you watch the movie anyway? I watched it anyway, but I watched it through like a veil of like <laughs> bitterness. Yeah. Like like the, the stairs became the place of the betrayal. <laughs> it was so mad. <laughs> oh, uh, so that. even now I'm like, what was it? It was I think it was the Avengers. Uh, yeah. We we me, me and Dame, Dame will both love the Avengers. And like there was some spoilers, which I'm definitely not going to say because right. that is a pretty new movie. Yeah. And he had found out one because people were like saying it on like messaging on Twitter, or Instagram, to yeah. say spoilers, which I don't know why. I honestly don't know why people would do that. Right. Like, and uh, and we like so for me, spoilers are like no, don't give me any spoilers. So did he tell you? No. Oh, he, he knows no, better. He's good. He's good. <laughs> like there's a reason I married him. So he's no, yeah. he's good like that. But. So, yeah, uh, so spoilers, but wow. So that was so we just fell into like books and reading and watching TV and like we like I was obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like there was, I don't know. I just was that was. I, I think escapism would be probably the most accurate word because, and I'm just I'm glad that was my upbringing because yeah. it kept us safe. Like that I've got no other words to explain it except we didn't. You know, I remember and I, this is a, actually a weird memory. I was six or seven. And uh, someone threw a stone, and we were we were just going into the close the, uh, 
uh, apartment building. Yeah. Um, so we were going into the close and the guy like threw like a stone or it might have been like a stick, a stone or a stick. And it like cut my eye. Like, and it was, what? I was actually really lucky that it didn't, it scabbed over and it was like, it was, it was like, and that really frightened my mum. Um, because it was almost like, okay, she's right to like, you know, have us kind of be home more. And it just kept us out of trouble. And I don't know, I think that that was like, I, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. wow. So, so your sister did, um, did she get into wrestling at all? She, no, no. no. Uh, but her knowing that you, I mean, when did it like, I know that you discovered it at 10. Yeah. But what did you do between 10 and then you started training at what age? 18. Okay, 18. so for eight years. I was biding my time for <laughs> <laughs> You're just watching it? I'm just over watching and over it. it. Um, studying it. Watch it. I always like, uh, I, like, I remember reading like Lita's autobiography. Like, I was just always like, just anything I could get my hands on. Uh, my sister would get like the, like the wrestling magazine. So anything I could get my hands on, we watched. Yeah. I discovered like ECW like tapes from HMV, like yeah. anything that I could watch. And so for those eight years, I just. I just studied that, and then I played a lot of um, I played a lot of like the SmackDown games, like yeah. Shut Your Mouth and Know Your Own. So I knew all the names of the moves. So oh, that's I was amazing. like, Oh, I know what Hurricane Man is. Yeah. Um, so for me, yeah, just for those eight years, and I just kept. I tried to be in. You know, I was never. I was never like a like. I, I tried to be active, like so. I you know would a dancer, terrible dancer, but I was a da I was a dancing <laughs> school for like ten years, but I was a, I'm a terrible dancer. Anyone will tell you that. Um, and I, I love that you did it for eight years when you're terrible. I was wow. terrible. Like if I do if I do something now, like I, you, you, like, you can see it just nothing moves the way it should. How did and you my last husband laughs? For He's eight like, years. well, it came. I was actually when I first started wrestling training, I was still dancing, and eventually it came to a point where I did have to choose, and there was no comparison to to wrestling. There was no comparison. Yeah. And I was always going in like training would be Tuesdays. Thursdays and Sundays, but then they would also do some times on Wednesdays. And then so I would go wrestling on Tuesday and then dancing on Wednesday. And I was, you know, my body was still getting used to a lot of this stuff. So right. I was, you know, I wasn't, I was sore. I probably hadn't mastered the art of stretching right. properly. And and also just, it, I did have to choose. Right. And in like dancing is like, I was, like, I love, I think it's amazing and I love, watching dancing like I love yeah. it it just wasn't it just like, wasn't my passion when you did it no. was it um you were trying to compete or is it for fun or where did you dance I danced uh what was it Alison Kennedy's School of Dance in Glasgow and it was it was classes every Wednesday and it was and that was that was and that, that was the first time I'd been around like a lot of girls Girls, 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 yeah. girls. I can't. Remember. We say girls here. <laughs> girls, okay. Um, girls. So I was around, you know, and let like um, it's hard to explain. Um, like little things, like everyone's like, uh, it's just so hard to explain. Like the it, for the first time, like you're like you're in this spotlight, and you're like, and you're thinking about things that you never had to think about before. Like I would never think twice about my like trainers, sneakers yeah. or tennis shoes being like yeah. scuffy, but I go in there and like jazz shoes or tap shoes, they need to be like pristine and clean and all these things. And, and I just, I don't know, always to me like with dancing, and I don't know if this is weird or not, I always kind of felt like the ugly duckling. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. like short and like, I was just like, I was, I was just like, I was the other side, like, you know, and yeah. there's always be these like, parts like I remember Chicago we did Chicago one year and I I loved Chicago I love Chicago I think it's a great yeah. great play. movie play everything yeah. um, and I memorized all the words to the songs and I really tried my best because auditions yeah and I was like in I remember like I felt like I knew everything like and I had the facial expressions because I love drama that was a huge thing um, yeah. being in school and being in secondary school, high school, drama was my favorite subject. Ah. I loved drama, yeah. um, which ex explains a lot, like drama yeah. and PE being like my favorite subjects, that explains a lot. And the, and like, I was just like, oh, and I felt like I, I was like, I can, I, I just felt like a soul, like I knew the part and I knew the words and I right. could bring the performance in there. But they ultimately went with like, 
you know, someone else. And I think you're like, you're 14, 15, and you've got all these teenage hormones going through you anyway. And they're like, oh, they picked the pry one. And it's, it wasn't that. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. it wasn't that. But, but in my 14 year old were, brain, yeah, with like that. these female hormones, and like, you don't know what's going on, you're 14. Like, right. You know, and you kind of think, oh, they picked her because she's really pry. And it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't that, I'm sure. Yeah. But it was just, so with dancing, I just never felt like I fit in. Yeah. And with wrestling, like you kind of you, you you can embrace standing out, yeah. and then at the same time it felt like the, the second I walked into wrestling school, it felt right. Mm. Like it felt right. Like it, yeah. it, it, not that it was easy by yeah. no means it wasn't easy, but it just instantly it felt right. Yeah. And like yeah, there was times where I was self conscious, and there's still times when you know like you're still learning and you're self conscious, but. It just, it's always felt right. Yeah. Where there's, I never got that with dancing. So it was like, it was such an easy decision to make at 18 that I was like, all right, bye dancing. But yeah. my mum wanted me to continue dancing because she oh, like, really? her and all the dance mums would like get together. But no, I, I'm just an awful dancer. I'm yeah. a terrible dancer. This is Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia. All right, guys, I'm going to get right back with the episode of Nikki Cross, but I had to stop everything right now because... As you know, I'm at Wizard World and I'm here with the Stormtroopers. Pretty badass, I gotta tell you. Your costumes are incredible. But what is so badass is what's behind everything here. All right, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and take off your helmet. I know, we're gonna get real here. I hope I don't have helmet head. We all <laughs> say this podcast is all about being real, raw, and inspiring. Yeah. And I'm very inspired by your story. So I wanted to go ahead and get you guys on so you can say what it is that you're doing in the documentary that you're working on. I appreciate that. Well, so the club is called 501st. It's, that's how it's known worldwide. And it is worldwide. There's uh, garrisons and, and outposts all over the world. And so, but here locally in Illinois, we are the Midwest garrison. And so what we do here is the same as anywhere anywhere in the world. Uh, we, we do a lot of charity work and that's all under the umbrella of uh, these Star Wars costumes that we make. Wow. Uh, this is a fun event that we're at and this yeah. is one of the things that you know most people see us and we're exposed to but what a lot of people don't realize is that we do a lot of charity work for Make-A-Wish and other causes and help raise money uh, directly and indirectly for these causes. Wow, that's really incredible. Yeah. I, that's seriously thank you for doing that you. because and you're working on a documentary as well yeah so the documentary is it, it's kind of a fan film uh, sort of uh, it, w there's no budget for it it's just something as a passion project that we've been working on uh, I'm a member obviously I'm all dressed yeah. up but so is my cameraman and this is something that we discussed uh, over a year ago uh, we wanted to basically get all this um, this footage on film where we're doing events like this and then but also the hospital visits where we visit sick kids yeah where we're you know where we're doing these charitable events and so that's really been our drive into getting people to understand that we're not just adults playing dress up yeah. this is not this is more than just cosplay this is something that we all do volunteer out of our own time out of our own money uh, we go to these events we uh, they event coordinate with us and we we do what we can for, wow. for different charities. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you again, really, for joining us. I had to stop everything so yeah. that I could let everybody know what's happening because I think this is really, really special. And the fact that this can all be fun, but it's great that you can turn it around, around to something about charity. Yeah. So thank you. And if you'd like to follow us at all, could yeah, I plug it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you can find us um, yeah, for Instagram, Behind the Bucket, Doc, all one word, uh, Facebook, Behind the Bucket. And then uh, we have a website. Everything's just behind the bucket. That's so awesome. if, if you Google behind the bucket, you'll find us. And this is the bucket. This right? is the bucket, yeah. So if, for those who aren't it aware, we call our helmets buckets. Yeah. And so behind the bucket is fitting because we're yeah. we want to talk about the people behind the bucket, those that are going out there doing what they need yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. thank you so much. Oh, thank you. All right. All right, guys. We're going to get right back with the episode now. So here you go. Now, now, now more Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia. So when that happened, though, before you could, you know, before your brain, right, you're trying to <laughs> understand yeah. why you're feeling all of this. Um, did you feel that way even outside of dancing? Did you feel a little bit of of that ugly duckling? Yeah, thing? yeah? I, it was. I think it's actually something that later on, like I used, I really used a lot. Um, it was just, I don't know. It was hard to. In school, it was, 
in, in school we you're just always made to feel a certain way and I think that like so many people it's such a it's sad to even say it bullying is such a common thing yeah and I did like I would get called ugly I would get called ugly every day if I managed to go through a day where I didn't get called ugly I would see that as like a huge one Whoa. so every day and it was and the, the thing is I was never it was never like physical right it was never physical and I knew people that had went through it physically and I can't even imagine that, you know. But so, mentally, it's just but as bad. every day getting called, like getting just called that every day, and it was, oh, it was, and I like, if, you can't say like, of course it affected, like, do you know what of I mean? Course. Like, because you have to like, it kind of makes you feel a certain way, and it, yeah. like you almost use, um, for me especially, you almost use like, you're like very self, like I, I know I'm very like self depreciating, because it was just like that sense of humor. You're like, all right, well, or. or if anything, you would like react to it and you would try and like, it gets into like a shouting match with your classmate. You're 13 years old, like I right. said, your hormones, you right. know, and then I, that, I would end up getting into trouble in school because of that, you know, because they, the it teachers would pull me out of the classroom and yeah. I'm like, they started it, they like. Right. So you almost go into ultra defense mode or you go into like deflection where you're like, you kind of deflect on it. And so I think like, it, even now you're still, I'm still, you know, you're still dealing with that and yeah. you just, you have to like just have to embrace and I think like the good thing about the last couple of years and I would say like I've got like some amazing friends amazing family and amazing husband so they've helped kind of you know th Lift build you the confidence yeah. but I think you can't go through that and I think I think every single person who's went through being bullied at school it had an effect on them whether yeah. they know it or not oh it's I feel had an like, effect on me for yeah, sure and yeah. you just have to and even even now, I mean, it's like you just you're like you're, you just see things in the mirror and like you just zone in on that and you focus in on that and um, like it, you you just well, it's uh, almost like you're looking for the reason, right? Mm -hmm. to, you're justifying. Okay, they're saying this over and over every day. It must yeah. be true. Yeah. Right. You're like, oh, it must be true. So let me look in the mirror and now let me look through their lens to find out why I look ugly. So all of a sudden you're pointing out every little imperfection so toxic. and then you're focusing on that where now in the mirror, that's all you see. Yeah. That is all you see. You know, Alexa Bliss, uh, your partner. <laughs> I love Alexa. Uh, your tag team partner. She talked about, you know, when she was on Chasing Glory, uh, her dealings with anorexia. Yeah. And how it got so bad that even when she was like 90 something pounds, um, she'd look in the mirror and she saw she was fat. That's what she could see. Yeah. So it's that same concept yeah. with you. Now, what have you been able to do that maybe you can help somebody who's listening to this that has is having that or has had that done to them, right? That somebody's telling them every single day that they're ugly, they're ugly, and now they're focusing on that, and now they're starting to believe it. Yeah. How have you been able, and you said it still affects you, right? Yeah. So it's not like you can just completely get over it, but how have you been able to get to a point where you are you know, strong enough to put yourself in the limelight because some people don't ever, when they get told that mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they can't function in life or they, yeah. they will not go for their dreams. They definitely won't put themselves in front of millions of people yeah. to then be, you know, criticized or um, judged. Yeah. You know, how have you been able to do that? Um, such a long process. And I really wish that I could have an easy answer for anyone that's going through this. And sometimes it's not easy. And I literally, but... I literally wish I could just be like, do this. Yeah. But it, it was such a, it was such a long process for me. And it was, for me, it was getting, getting to WWE was messy. Like I would look out, like I was, so when we, so we ended up moving out of the really bad area when I was like 11 and I just remember I was in I had like a box bedroom so I had yeah. my own room I finally had my own room but it was a small room and I just remember I'd look at that window and like my tv would be here my bed would be here and then the window was here it was a really it was a box room okay um but it was rather that than share so I was right. like okay I'll take the box room and uh I'd just look at that window and I'll just be like I'm getting out of here and it was it was you know not nothing to do with my family right. it meant more like I'm not going to I'm not going to be here. I, like, I'm not going to 
Well, here with the abuse that you were going through with the school. It was, yeah, it was, it was, for me, it was like, I'm going to be successful and you're all like, it was, it was almost like this. And you're you're all going to regret saying, yeah, yeah, watch me. It was almost like a, it was a, it was a drive. So it was like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to, like, I'm uh, like, but it was, oh man, I really wish I could like, and I always say this, I wish I could go back to like that 13 year old or 14 year old girl and just give her a hug. Because I remember being there and like scared to go into school and like thinking how I could get out of school and like pretending to mum, like my mum was sick. Like I was trying to, all these scenarios, how can I get out of going to school tomorrow? And then I ended up like, I would I, I would play truant. Like, um, I don't know what you guys call it, your dog. We call it like, in Scotland we call it Dogging school. Dogging school. Okay. Dogging school. So um, cutting and, school. Yeah. Would that be the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And I would like, I would just jump on a train, and then I would just, I wouldn't. The train stop. I would just not get off at the school. You just keep going. And like, and like, the thing is, like in Glasgow, like people would be looking at you, like, why are you not? Look, like you're in your uniform, so you'd have to like, you'd have to change. Like, oh, so you brought a, a change of clothes? Yeah, so that I wouldn't keep getting asked. Like, yeah. And that wasn't that wasn't the answer because then my studies suffered and right. I think that's why I think now that's why I love being because mm. I wasn't able like I mean when I went to university and that's when I went to wrestling I was 18 going yeah. to I loved university it was like a freedom that I just I I loved being a student but I think like I feel like a lot of that was taken away when I was like 13 or 14 yeah. which may be may be over dramatic but you know it's so that not was, over dramatic at all that wasn't that this wasn't the good. right that wasn't the right thing um and it was just, uh, I don't know. And I, you like you tried to tell people, and it just didn't. It just didn't. They didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, they just didn't. So do you anything. did try to, to yeah. tell somebody. And they just who did, did you tell? I told like the teachers, and they, like, they just didn't. There was nothing they could really, unless it was physical. There was nothing they could do. Oh wow! Because they would say stuff to me in the hallways. Like there was, unless it was like, and I think people didn't. Like, also, I think people, I don't know, it's just they were, you know, that wasn't, but, you know, that was, cutting school wasn't the answer either. So I wouldn't, I don't want anyone to do that because that wasn't the answer for me. Right. If anything, it made things worse because I would spend the whole day by myself and I would, it would build up the dread even more in my head. Yeah. And it would, and so that wasn't the answer either. Right. So then you're like, honestly, for me, I, the only thing I can say, I keep doing that. Um, Honestly, for me, a thing I can say is like success was the best re- revenge. But then I don't even, I don't even want to think about revenge because it's negative and it's toxic. Like mm-hmm. I, it took me a very, very long time. But you're like, I can look back at that and you know, I mean, like I, I, I touched upon it a lot, like um, on an independent scene on my promos and yeah. even with NXT, like I touched on that. And me and, you know, me and Alex have actually been able, we've used it and we've kind of used it in our story, but both kind of not fitting in. And so we've both used that. And, and for me, like, it was cathartic almost. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I remember this independent promo where I like, I think I threw my yearbook on the ground and like, was like, I don't know. It was just such a, you know, I ended up like really exploding it and using it as much as yeah. I could to, to really try and come to terms with it and like right. be okay with it and not be bitter because like we look forward. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Plus there's it's also made you who you are because oh, you think about it. If there's a few things that I learned right from being bullied, A, it did drive me. So mm. it is Insane. a driver. It is a driver. Whether you're doing it for revenge or you're doing it for I'll show them or yeah. whatever it is, if you can turn it into a positive and make it drive you for something positive, use it. It's such use a drive. Use it. Use it. So it drove me for sure. I think that another thing is is that I learned empathy for others that were being yeah. bullied as well. Yeah. Because I'd been there, so I empathized, and then I was able. Even now, when I hear that you were bullied, like I feel like this empathy with you yeah. and, and and understanding. And um, I, I think now, hopefully, things are getting better and better with more and more awareness as we're I talking so. about it, right? I think the awareness. I mean, I think that's something that kind of. That's such. That's the kind of word I was looking for when I was telling like the teachers what was going on. Like it, it was, ugh, there wasn't as much awareness, or yeah. it was brushed under the carpet. Yeah. And you know, it, you know, it was brushed under the carpet. Yeah. yeah. Or just so I think the more awareness we can do, and that that's the thing I think. Like you just for like people that are going through this, it's like 
and I would hate it because people would always say to me, things will get better, things will get easier, you're not going to be 14 years old forever. Right. And I'd get so mad at them because I'm like, no, that's not why we're here right now. Yeah. But they were right and it, it does get better and it's almost like, you know, it does get better and it makes you who you are and you, you just learn, you learn a lot about yourself and yeah. you learn a lot about people and yeah. then you just, the more awareness we can do, I think the better yeah. and I think like, you know, I, I'm sure cyberbullying is even Oof. because when I was growing up, we didn't have we any of that. Of that yeah. So cyberbullying and there's just, and I just, I, I just, you, you feel, I just remember feeling so helpless. Yeah. When it was going, when it was, so I think if you can do anything to give yourself some power back, do that. And yeah. you know, and do it. Like, it, for me, like, talking to someone at least, like, I remember, um, I just have this really distinct memory where, like, so I cut my own hair, I cut my, like, bangs, fringe, we call it fringe. Yeah. And I cut it too short. I've done that. And, uh, oh my God. <laughs> Not fun. And I went into school and, like, I was, they made, like, it was horrific. Yeah. It was horrible. And then, like, I remember, like, I, tried to stay off school for like two weeks. And I was just like, and my mom was like, she, I think that's when she realized like it was serious. Yeah. Like yeah. she realized. And then, so I think I just grabbed a Kirby and then just started pinning it back. And then, so then my fringe grew really long cause then I tried to grow it out. Yeah. And then I remember like the boys in the class were still saying stuff. And it was my friend that turned around to me and she was like, it really doesn't matter what you do. You're your fringe can be too on. short or your fringe can be too long. Like, they're always going to say, I think they said, like, shaggy or something. Like, I was, like, so long. Yeah. That I was just trying to grow out. And it was my friend that was, like, and even just her saying that was, like, and I don't know why. Like, it's funny the things we forget over the years. Right. And it's funny the little things we remember. So my friend saying that to me, I was, like, do you know what? You're right. And I actually confronted them. I was just, like, and, like, I, I confronted the person when they were by themselves. Yeah. And they were, like, almost taken aback. Mm. So it taught me, like, you know, and then like I think that's a wise thing right there yeah. confront the person confront by them. themselves yes not in front of anybody yeah. else but by themselves and don't react in anger like speak right. to someone because it would never it would never do me favors like they would shout they would say something and then I would lose my temper and I'd get kicked out of class right you know and sent to the principal's right. office sorry um and sent to the principal's like uh, yeah. head teacher's office but then there was there was times where like there was this happened like about four times where I remember and I would like I remember having these conversations and I'd be like, why are you, why are you being like this? And I, that was the tone of voice I would use. I wouldn't react right. badly. I would react just the way I said it there. Yeah. And I would get them by themselves and then they would always just be like, oh, but we're only joking. And I was like, it doesn't... It doesn't feel like a joke. Or like they would say, oh, but you didn't have to react like that. And I was like, well, maybe you shouldn't say the things you say. So I don't know if maybe that was something that like confronting them and like just calm in the situation like yeah. speaking to them calmly and like kind of I don't know if it makes them kind of think wow oh, what am I doing what am I doing like you know yeah. and then so that you know that I, I think that. I think like and even now um you know with things like I always like I like to talk to people like just face to face I like I yeah. just like I'm like okay let's talk about that and I just think everything is so calming yeah and it just calms everything down yeah and the thing is there's just there's no I wish there was like a I wish I had a magic wand. But can I just say something? And I hope that you will receive this. You are a beautiful girl. Oh, Cause thank you. Nikki, not only are you beautiful outside, you are so beautiful inside. Thank I you. am so grateful to have gotten to know you oh. and gotten to know your spirit. And you are somebody that just shines the room oh. when you walk in, so. Thank you. <laughs> it's, and that's the thing, like you do like, you do kind of learn how to like, you just embrace everything. And you, yeah. you do learn how to like, you do learn to love yourself. And I think everyone, no matter, like you always have that, <laughs> like, you know, or like something. Yeah. But you, you just, you embrace who you are. Yes. And I think that that's been, for me, that's been the most significant thing coming to NXT and being in WWE. Like, it's just, you, you if anything, you're under even, more of a microscope than you've ever been. Right, that's what but I mean. But you actually like there's a like that. This the last couple of years is where the confidence has risen. Yeah, and then I think wrestling as well. I mean, wrestling yeah. gave me that. Ga wrestling gave me that confidence. Well, let's talk about this because you know now that you're on Raw, you're a tag team women's champion. How does that feel? Tell me about that process. Like when you got told that you were going to win. 
<laughs> I think it was it was it was uh, Fit Finley that told me, and I I absolutely adore Fit. Like I yeah. love Fit. I love picking his brain, and he's helped me ever since coming up and coming across in January. He has helped me so much. Yeah. Um, just helped me tweak things and just made me a better wrestler. And uh, so it was it was I was like when Fit told us that the, that was the plan, and I was just like, and you, you kind of just you're like oh, okay. Uh, it, you know, you you you, you kind of like you're like okay, but it, you know things might change. You know, so you don't like you just keep yourself level, which I yeah. always agree. Like I believe that in life, you just keep until the moment happens. Yeah, <laughs> just like keep yourself level and chilled. And, yeah, you know, for us it was, and I was just like, but for me it was um, it was it, it was exciting. I, I was yeah. like, all right, let's do this. And then for me it showed me that um, they want to continue this me this story with me and Alexa because that was something we really wanted. We wanted to continue. Oh, really? Um, but it, it, we wanted to continue because yeah. there's so much there. Yeah. And we, you know, and we have really good chemistry and like yes. we get along really well. So we were like, there's so much more we can show here. So them, you know, um, putting that faith and trust in us, that was a huge, I mean, that's Lifter. that's yeah. trust and faith that the company's putting in you, yeah. and that's trust and faith in you and your character and your story, and um, right. our story and our characters. Right. So we that was, so then it happens, and then you just <laughs> you it doesn't you know it doesn't sink in, yeah. and then it, it, I don't know it, it you're just it just doesn't sink in. Like do and you it, do you hold the title and go oh my god oh my god the first oh thing god. I like they I think John John Cohn was our referee and he. I think he gave it to Alex, and Alex handed it, like gave it to me, and I just, <laughs> I just looked, and I was, what the? I was like, oh, this is, because I dreamed of being like a champion, um, you know, the, I dreamed of being a WWE champion, and I was yeah. just like, oh my god, I did it, and it was, but it's weird because on, on one half of you feels very, I did that, yeah, I did what I set out to do, yeah, but then you're like, it's, it's not, it's, it's the start, it's not the end, right? It's not the end of the journey, like right. it's. Uh, like to me like I want to wrestle for you know as long as I possibly can like 10 more years like you know so it was almost like I don't know it was like it was it was almost like the end not the end of the journey but it was almost like I did that but then it's not because you're like oh man the hard if anything and I always got told that I was like when you you I was always trying to to get working to get a tryout yeah for NXT and like Robbie would always say he was like the hard work starts when you get to the performance center. Yeah. Like anything before then, like that was just you preparing yourself, the hard work starts. And then it was, the hard work starts when you, uh, you're you on NXT television. The hard work starts, you know, the and it was just always like, it's, it was never the end. Right. It was always, okay, this is a new chapter, this is a new chapter, the hard work, like now, now yeah, we start. Then, yeah. Yeah. And now it was almost like the same thing with the, you know, the championships, I was like, now we start and now we 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 I just we both want to have the best tag matches we can yeah. and we we just want to tell great stories and I just always want and I wrote this on my, my Twitter I was like I just wanted like all I ever wanted was to create that magic and like the 11 year old girl who's watching wrestling in a room with her sister yeah give her something like you know yeah and be I remember being entranced by like it was like the oh what was it, it was the I think it was the Stephanie, the Kurt Angle, and the Triple H that the yeah. the storyline from 2000, and there was so many amazing, like Last Man Standing with um, Jericho and Triple H, and yes. it's it always the drama and always the stories, and it was you just gave people that little that little yeah. Narnia place, yeah. like almost, and so for me that's why I, I want to create that for other people, right? So I just want to keep doing that, and it was like I said, it was almost like you look at it and you're like, I did it. Yeah. Yes. And then you're like, okay, now, now we, we, now go, we start. Now, now we, we start. Yeah, so it's just. It. Congratulations. That's I love, so great. It's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. And like, it wasn't, I think I got to my hotel room and I was just like, oh, okay. And it started to sink in then. And I was just like, and then we, you know, we have a match with the Kabuki Warriors on Monday Night Raw this yeah. coming Monday. So, and that was, we're just excited. We just, we want, we, we just, we want, people to be talking about the women's tag team division as much as we can yeah. and we just want we're just so excited and the thing is with um this is actually my first I've always been more of a a singles like a, a singles wrestler mm -hmm. and then starting 
um, you know, I was always a, like a singles wrestler. Yeah. So this is like, and then you this realize that tag team wrestling yeah. is it's a different, it's different storytelling, and it's so, so creative and exciting. You're like, oh, mm. this is like, you know, for the, for the last eleven years, like I was always like it was mostly singles. Right. And now I'm like, oh, it's like a new bag of like. It's treats to go yeah, into, yeah, yeah. and there's going to be like there's going to be some things that we try that might um, be, you know, good, and then there might be stuff that we do which is great, you know. So it's just about exploring that, and that's just um, oh, I that's love exciting. It. That's I what's exciting it. to that me about exciting. wrestling. It's just that's like, exciting. and it is, and it's so funny, and that's like that's the biggest thing for me is just learning. It's a completely different type of storytelling. Yeah, because you have four people you can right, you know right, four people now. right right. So you mentioned that Lita was somebody that you really mm -hmm. looked up to. The fact, like, do you remember when you first got to meet her mm -hmm. and how you felt? Like, she was so chilled out and relaxed. So then I was like, I felt really chilled out and relaxed. Like she's just very, just very relaxed. And yeah. I was like, oh, it was like, and I just said, so I was lovely, lovely to meet you. Like I just, she's very chilled. So yeah. then she kind of, I was relaxed too. And yeah. like, but it was another one, like I really looked up to um, Mickey James. Oh, I loved Mickey James. Yeah. That Mickey and Trish storyline was yeah. amazing. And then I actually got to wrestle Mickey on the independence scene. Yeah. And I just, even now, I will like, I just love Mickey. Yeah. She's, from day one, she's always been very helpful. If I've ever had a question, she's gave me an honest answer. And she's always yeah. told me how it is. And, and she's, she's, she's helped me a lot and we kept in touch. And then to both end up on um, on Working Raw and together. Smackdown, yeah. and, um, it's amazing. So, and like I always loved that. Like I loved meeting Mickey and having looked up to her for years. Yeah. And then she was so nice. And then yeah. we had so much fun working together. So it was like yeah. it was so nice to like look up to someone, and then you, you find out that they're yeah. really as nice. The same with Lita, Trish as well. Like you You've grew met up her, right? watch, yes, yeah. and you grew up watching them, yeah. and you meet them, and they're yeah. awesome, and then you're like. Oh, yay, yay. <laughs> Do you know, and you just feel lucky. You're like, okay, that's, you know. Somebody's going to be saying that about you, Nikki. That's Goodness, what's I hope so. I mean, as long as there's caffeine, I'll be fine. No, <laughs> it's so cute to think about the little girl right now who's yeah. watching, who's even watching this or hearing this. Yeah. And is like, I look up to Nikki, man. She's mm. cool because she's not like every, the, all the other girls that, you know, this or that. Or, you know, so you have this different thing about you that is so beautiful and charming. Thank and you. they're resonating with you, and, and I love that. Now, how hard has it been, though, to be on the road, on Raw, mm -hmm. and your husband's still at NXT? So we're pretty, so we're good. We, um, I mean, we, let's see, let's see. So I'll get home on Tuesdays, usually. If we do SmackDown, then I'll get home Wednesdays. And then he, with NXT, like, we, we've been get we get Wednesday night together. Or sometimes all of Wednesday, just depending yeah. if it's a travel day for me or not. And then we get like all of Thursday together and then all of Friday together. But it depends if I leave for the road on Friday or Saturday. Um, so we, we get at least like a day and a half, two days and a half. Anybody hearing this right now would be like, oh my God, <laughs> that's it and it works? <laughs> we in A day and a half to two, so wow, a it, week. For us, like, it's not, the, this is the way I look at it. It's not going to be, we're going to be 60 and we're going to get to be together every night. Yeah. So I'm just like, all right, when I'm 60, like, so for us, and because we, this is the important thing, we met through wrestling. Right. We, you get it. We did this journey together. We got signed six months apart. Yeah. You know, I was, I lived in America for six months and then he came six months later. Like, we got signed together. We did this journey together. Like, there's, we've just, you know, we've like, <laughs> we've, you know, it's we've worse. been through a lot, so yeah. it's like for the journey, it's like there's not. We've um, we've always accepted that we chose this lifestyle, yeah. which would mean that we don't get to see each other every day or right. every night, and we've accepted that. Yeah. And for us, when we're like I said, fifty or sixty, we're like we're yeah. going to like grow together, and like so for me, it's like you know, for right now, and then all what you do with those two days is. You just you have to be very present and in mm. the moment with each other. So we try and like you know we try and like put our phones away and like only like we quality time over quantity time. Yes, and I love we that. just we just make you know we love like for instance we love Cracker Barrel. So we have like we love going to Cracker Barrel. We love going to the cinema. We love 
binge watching like right now we're watching a supernatural yeah uh, i'm sure we'll watch glow when you know glow yeah. started streaming yesterday so we just love we just we like and yeah. it's funny because we have very different tastes oh. and like movies sorry that's caffeine <laughs> um he likes comedy like really silly comedy and like ah. funny stuff I like really scary, like horror movies. I'm a horror movie. You like, do? I love horror movies. I love Why? them. Why? Do you know what made you love them? Honestly, no. <laughs> like, I okay. just, I just always, I just, I loved, like, so. Suspense? I just loved the suspense. And I loved, like, my favorite thing is Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. Oh. I love being scared. <laughs> I love someone jumping out at me, or I love watching something. Like, oh, oh. like I just, yeah. I love all of that. Like, I just, I just love them. And they were just so interesting to me. Like, I've got, like, a, you know, I just, so many, like, it's just, there's a lot of comedies I was just like, oh, I don't think like, that funny. But, like, there's horror movies, which I'm like, oh, my goodness, I... And he does not like horror movies. No, but <laughs> we have, we both kind of like thrillers. Okay, So, suspense. Yeah. So, we've kind of... Found something in the middle. Found them in the middle. Yeah. And then I will, like, I'll watch, like, so, and then we both love the Marvel movies. Yeah. So, we've got that. So we're good. That's great. Um, but it's so funny. We have very different tastes, but we like compromise and yeah. like it teaches us about compromise because yeah. I like and not opposites attract because in a lot of ways we're very similar. Right. But like yeah, that whole like yeah, we have totally different view and tastes. Yeah. Like I love watching. Oh my goodness! Like I love watching CSI, forensic files. Yeah. Like um, all these like really, you really have a dark side about you. I love. <laughs> I just love like crime shows. Yeah. And then, so he's just, so whenever he's on the road and I'm at home, yeah. I'll use that time I to watch the stuff. I was just going to say, that's what you need to do. <laughs> to watch the stuff he won't watch with yeah. me. And like all those like, like B horror movies. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so we, we make it work. And then when I'm not home, that's when he watches, like he's like, okay, I'll watch like, oh, who's, oh, like Colin Farrell. Uh -huh. Is that that's So that's he, he loves Colin Farrell. So he'll watch those movies because he's it. like, you know, I don't. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, there, I just got a weird sense of humor. <laughs> like, okay. There's just, I don't know, there's just... I love how you make it work, though. <laughs> I love how you make it work. Just Girl, compromise. I'm, just like I said, I'm so excited. Your journey is so incredible. Your drive is so amazing. Thank you. Um, I'm so excited to see how your continued chase for glory, uh, you know, <laughs> continues. I love it. And as we wrap this up, I want to ask you... I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm spo I spoke for so long. No, it's been great. It's been great. Has your chase for glory looked the way you thought it was going to look? What do you mean? Um, when you're a kid looking as to what I'm going to do in life, like, has it looked the way you thought when you were looking out that window, right? When you're in your box and you're looking out that window, and this is what I want my life to look like. Has it looked that way? Yeah. And it took, it, it, like, I'm 30, so it took, it took a long, long time. And there was definitely times when it wasn't how I pictured it. You yeah. know, there was like, there was, you know, just different times, like, you know, in, on the independence scene where like, I was like, whoa, like, you know, oh, the, like there was so many things that I was like, oh, this is, but now where I'm at, like yeah. being a WWE champion, um, getting to work with amazing people like Alexa, like she's amazing. And then yeah. having someone who's so understanding and have a family that support me, it's like, this was I, this is what I wanted, and I never. Even though I had this drive, I was like, I never knew if I would, like, I didn't know, like, well, you know, like, you, this is, you you have your drive, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna be fine, like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna achieve my dreams. You still have that seed of doubt, which yeah. is like, can I really do this? Like, I'm a five foot nothing girl from Scotland, I'm like, can I really do this? And then, in that 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 stays that yeah. stays there like they're like can I really do this can I really do this and then I'm like I'm 30 and you know I live in America and I'm with my husband and he we achieved this dream together so it's you know it's and wow. like I said WWE champion um working with amazing people like Alex and it's like okay. things are looking up. I was like this is how I pictured that you know <laughs> this is how I pictured that I and love it but it's just it just shows that like there's if you're driven enough, like if you if you're driven enough and you just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, you you're not going to take no for an answer. Yeah. Like, Even when things did, was there any time in your wrestling career that you wanted to quit? That things were just so hard that you were like, I don't know about this. There, there was there was. 
Mm. Never seen, no, there was maybe one more, there was maybe one time on Independence um, and I just felt, but it, it, it was never deep. Like it was never like, I'm going to, like it, was, it was just one moment where I was like, I can't, like, I don't know if I can, like, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I, I know if I'm going to like I don't know if I'm going to make it, and you know I and I'd like gotten hurt, not badly but like something had happened with my nose and my face and like and I was you know there was bl like bleeding. blood <laughs> bleeding yeah. and 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 the I was like trying to get on trying to get a tryout you know and there was. There was that, but it was never like, it was more like, why am I doing this? You know, but it was just such a fleeting mm -hmm. thing and it was never deep. It was just very fleeting. It was never yeah. serious. Like I never seriously thought, oh, all right, I'm going to quit. That was never right. like, and even like, so it was funny, but, and I'll just tell this really quick, was like, um, when I first did my tryout, I actually, they said, no, not right now. Mm. And then a few weeks later, they were like, okay, we, we're going to, We've decided to bring you in. Oh, wow. So and I and it's such a weird feeling because I was like, I know what it's like to get the no. Yeah. And I know what it's like to get the yes. And I know what it's like to get the maybe. So for me, when I got that no, when I got the yes, it made me just be so grateful and appreciate it. Even now, like everything now, I appreciate it so much because I worked for it. And I know what it's like to get that no. I love it. Nobody knows that there's like a train. There's a choo choo right train. The choo -choo I love it. Train. There's a choo choo train. That's cool. And um and so getting that no. I was actually in Japan and I was there for three months and I got that email saying, no, not right now. And I just, for like two weeks, I was just, I was so, I was really down. I was like, what did I do? And then I was like, all right. And I just like started sending my emails out and send my CVs out again. And I was like, okay, I'll go and, I'm going to go and wrestle in Mexico. All right, I'm going to go and <laughs> like, yeah. so I was just like, okay. And then, and then I got the email another two weeks later. But that, I remember that, that week being in Japan, being away from everyone, and getting that email saying, no, not right now. I was just like, and it, to me, the, the tryout. Doubts start the doubt and I was, But then it was like, it was never, okay, I'll quit wrestling. I was like, okay, right. all right. And then, but it was almost, I had to pick myself up. Yeah. And that's what you, and the, honestly that, I would not change a single step of that because it taught me how to pick myself up. You know, and it, even you need to, you if you can't do that for yourself, yeah. It's going to be hard to find. You don't. You know, I don't want someone to do it for me. It's nice to have someone. You know, obviously, it's nice when your husband picks you up, like right. emotionally. Right. But you need to be able to do it for yourself. Yeah. And if you can't do it for yourself, yeah, you know, and that's that's the important thing. So, like, I know. So, for anyone out there who wants to like wrestle and just, just, I know what it's like to get the no. <laughs> I've yeah. been there. I know just what it's like to going. get the no, and you just keep going. Okay, so then. Like I said, I, after a couple of weeks of being really down, I was like, all right, started sending that I was going to go to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Wrestling in Mexico. I was like, I'm going to go to Mexico. Um, and just Wait, was like. you never got to Mexico because you went to WWE. Yeah. <laughs> and I've still okay. never been to Mexico. You know? No, I oh, need to, uh, I need to I wait, wait for WWE to go. I like it. So, I can't wait. That's gonna, that Mexican trip is going to feel a little bit more special because you're going to be like, wow, this would have been the route had I not gotten yeah. this call. So that's <laughs> no, crazy. I even well, heard so that you would go to Mexico. It was in your future, just through the WWE. <laughs> I'd have to learn some Spanish. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank really you for having me. It. And I want to let everybody know how they can find you on social media. <laughs> I forgot my <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> uh, so Insta so always look for the blue tack because there's a lot yes. of fake profiles out there which terrify me. Um, it just scares me. Yeah. Um, so always look for the blue tack. Um, I think Instagram as Nikki Cross WWE. Okay. And then Twitter as. God. Okay, it's not like you look at yourself, right? We'll put it up on the screen for you. I think it's worry. I think it's Nikki Cross WWE. Okay, so the same for both. I feel like yeah. Okay, if not, you know what? We'll put the right ones on on the screen. <laughs> That's for so sure. bad. I don't yeah, even know. It's okay. I'm like, it's all right. Um, we'll but yeah, you. only Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Only Twitter and Instagram. Okay. So. Well, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Sure. <laughs> Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia. All right, and there you have it, wow. Nikki Cross. That was oh, awesome. That was great. <laughs> that was oh it is. It is. Wow. She is a badass. It's great to hear stories, right? Like they're real stories and the struggle and how they endured it and how much fun she is having now. Like yeah. I love that. Yeah. You guys can 
I mean, can you picture yourselves backwards? She's just starting right now. I, when I say she's just starting, she's been in NXT for a while, but she's just been over now at Raw. Do you remember oh, that so when you excited. were excited? Oh my yeah, god, yeah, so and excited. nervous, right? Oh, and yeah. nervous. Something oh my god, up. yes. Oh my god, it's I, so crazy. It's so fun. Oh, so crazy how it seems like it's a lifetime ago. Uh, it, right? But it also seems like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Too, totally. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. thank you guys for joining me for this. I wanted to make sure and get you guys in. Remember that you can actually see this episode. You can go to youtube.com slash Lillian Garcia on YouTube. And you can also follow the show at Chasing Glory Podcast on Instagram. And then, of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lillian Garcia. And for you, at Real Lisa Marie. Wilson. That's it. So simple, so easy. Make sure you follow all of us so you can continue our Chasing Glory stories. Every day, there's something. Every day. But for now, make sure you go out there and live with much peace, love, and passion. And remember to always be yourself and trust that it's enough. See you guys. Bye. Peace out. Are you going to sing us out? Uh... I have been so excited. <laughs> I've been, wait. 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 Thanks for joining us here on Chasing Glory from executive producer Lillian Garcia. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends and be sure to subscribe at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows.